So, listen good. We are the Israelites from Israel United in Christ. We are here to teach you your true nationality and how to come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Now, what we're going to deal with is a lot of people are going to celebrate a holiday in two days. And according to the Bible, Christmas is not a holy day. Yes. Christmas is of the devil himself. That's right. So we're going to go into the Bible and we're going to investigate. Should we be celebrating Christmas or not? Now it's funny, the young man was just talking about separating and not wearing Nikes and not watching the BCS, but now when we talk about Christmas, he runs to the other side of the street. So let's let's get that. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 10. Let's start right there first. Get up. Huh? What do you do on, on it then? What do I do on Christmas? Yeah, what do you do on Christmas? I knew, I knew you were doing something. I knew it. That's an excuse. You're celebrating Christmas. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, uh -huh. O house of Israel. So the Bible is speaking only to the children of Israel. Read. Thus saith the Lord. Learn not the way of the heathen. Do what? Learn not the way of the heathen. So the Bible is very specific. It says learn not the way of the heathen. Now it's going to detail and outline exactly what is the way of the heathen that we should not be doing. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Read. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Uh -huh. For the custom of the people, customs of the people are vain. So the Bible says that the customs of the other nations are vain, meaning of no profit. Read. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. For what? For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. So the Bible is outlining that the heathen would cut a tree out of the forest. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever seen that happen, young man? No? You don't know what a Christmas tree looks like? You've seen it before, right? How about you? My man right here. You yeah. seen somebody cut a tree out of a forest? That's the night of the word. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10, right? You seen that happen, right? Read. The work of the hands of the workmen uh -huh. with the axe. Read. They deck it with silver and with gold. They do what? They deck it with silver and with gold. And when you cut that tree out of a forest, my man, what do they do with it? I'm talking to you with the blue hat. What do they do with it once they cut it out of the forest? Uh, they, 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 they put in the house, oh, oh let's look at this, let's, let's, let's humble down to this right. image. Right, there you go. Yeah. Read. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, uh -huh. that it move not. Read. They are upright as the palm tree, uh -huh. but speak not. They must needs be born. So, the Bible outlines that we should not learn the way of the heathen going into Christmas. And it just specifically detailed the decorating and putting silver and gold onto your trees. Right. Now it told us not to follow the ways of the heathen in doing that. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 25. So on the flip side, so if we should not be uh, putting a Christmas tree up in our house, what should we do with it? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 25. Uh -huh. The graven images of their God. The what? The graven images of their God. The graven images going into that Christmas tree. Because when you go into the history of the Christmas tree, it goes all the way back to ancient Babylon. Right. When you read about Tammuz and Nimrod and Ceramus, that tree was their God. Right. Read. Shall ye burn with fire? Shall ye what? Burn with fire. Shall ye what? Burn with fire. Read. That's right. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold. The what? The silver or gold. You should not desire the silver or the gold that you decorate on your Christmas tree. Read. That is on them, nor take it unto thee, uh -huh. least thou be snared therein. Lest what? Least, least thou be snared therein. Least you be snared therein. And that is where you see us today as a nation of people. We are hidden in prison houses and held hostage in the slums and ghettos across America. Right. Give me Titus, I mean not Titus, give me Colossians 2 and 8. Because it said unless you be snared therein. We are snared financially on Christmas. Right. Who knows how much money is spent and given away to the other nations on Christmas. How much money is given to the other nations on Christmas that can go into investing into ourselves? So that we can have our own businesses. Right. So that we can have our own bus system. Right. So that we can have our own schools. Right. Instead, we're buying Jordans. Instead, we're buying PS3s. 
Black. Ah, now he's going into judgment. Bring it out. But he said he didn't celebrate it. Why is this an issue if you don't celebrate Christmas? I don't understand it. Bring it out. If someone was talking about a homosexual, it would not bother me, would it? Because I'm not a homosexual. But we're talking about Christmas, and he's, he's over there acting all crazy. Let's keep reading, though. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8 uh -huh. Beware lest any man spoil The Bible is telling you again To beware Many be on alert Lest what? Lest any man spoil you Lest any man spoil you When you look at the black, Hispanic, and Native American community We have been spoiled as a people Right Each and every facet of our lives We always get the lower hand Every single time We through philosophy. Through what? Through philosophy. Through philosophy. We and vain deceit. And vain deceit. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. That is a philosophy. Somebody show me a scripture when they tell you to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. You know. Let alone somebody show me the exact date that December the 25th we are supposed to celebrate it. You will not find one. You have been fooled with philosophies. Read. After the tradition of men. After what? After the tradition of men. Because guess what? When you look it up, this is a man-made holiday. That's right. right. Nowhere in the Bible is it written that we should celebrate Christmas. Or we should celebrate the birth of Christ. Christ didn't celebrate it. Not once. What did he celebrate? Give me John 10 and 22. Because there are days for the black, Hispanic, and Native American man to celebrate. I know a lot of times when the Israelites, when we come on the scene, we always tell you what you shouldn't do. And that's what the Bible tells us to do. But now we're going to educate you and build you up. So guess what? When you leave, not only will you know not what to do, but you should know what to do. Give me that. John chapter 10 verse 22. Uh -huh. And it was at Jerusalem uh -huh. at the feast of the dedication. At what? At the feast of the dedication. At the feast of dedication. For all of you scholars out there, that is Hanukkah. Read it again. And it was at what Jerusalem at the feast of the dedication. At the feast of dedication, read. And it was winter. Uh -huh. And Jesus walked. And, who? and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So Jesus went in to observe this day. Jesus went in to celebrate Hanukkah, not Christmas. But just in case you still think Christmas is dealing with Christ or in the dead of the winter, which it is not, let's get the birth of Jesus Christ proving that it was not in the winter time. You know. Let's get Luke chapter 2 and verse 4. Right. Because my man down there is mad. We're just going to read the scriptures. That's all we're doing. We're just going to read the Bible. Bring it out. Luke chapter 2 verse 40. And you judge for yourself whether what we're saying is true or not. And you can follow along. This is not a special book. It is only the Holy Bible. Read. And the child grew. And what? And the child grew. Read. And waxed strong in spirit. Uh -huh. Filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Read. Now his parents went to Jerusalem. Now his parents went to Jerusalem. When you read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 16, there were three feast days that the children of Israel must and had to go up to Jerusalem. That's right. Read. Every year at the feast of the Passover. At the what? Feast of the Passover. So during the feast of the Passover, the children of Israel, specifically Mary and Joseph, went up to the feast. Read. And when he was 12 years old. And what? And when he was 12 years old. And when he became 12 years old during the feast of Passover. Right. Which is in the spring, as the young lady said earlier. Read. They went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. After the custom of the feast. There you go again. So that's, that's two feast days we just gave you. Hanukkah and the feast of Passover are ordained by God. That's right. right. But what do we find ourselves doing? Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, uh, New Year's, uh, Valentine's Day, so on and so forth. Let's go to Proverbs 3 and 31 real quick. Let's see what God said about these days. Because who taught us these holidays? Who taught the black man to celebrate Christmas? Who taught you to celebrate Thanksgiving? Who taught you to celebrate New Year's? 
Oh, 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 come in now. Come on, come on now. I just heard something. What'd you say? Birthday, May 18, 1957, Jesus born. 60 years old. Uh, you, you a Jehovah Witness? 60 years old. You a Jehovah Witness? Uh, you thought Christ already came to the earth? Yeah. My man, you think Christ already came to the earth? Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Unbelievable. Read that. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Uh -huh. Envy thou not the oppressor. Do what? Envy thou not the oppressor. The Bible says to envy thou not the oppressor. Read. And choose none of his ways. And what? And choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. Now give me Isaiah 47 and 3. Now this young man just said, you believe you're Jesus Christ, huh? Now let's see. Because we already know Christ left Sir. to ascend up to the heavens. Now we're going to read, how is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, going to return to the earth? Let's see. Is he going to return as a carnal five foot eight man? Or is he going to return as the black mighty Messiah? Read that. Isaiah chapter 47 verse 3. Uh -huh. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Uh -huh. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. Read. I will take vengeance and I will meet. I will not meet. Hold on. I will take vengeance when he returns. I'm not seeing any vengeance on behalf of the children of Israel taking place. And you said you've been here since 1957. Bring it up. Since 1957, things have been going backwards. Read. And I will not meet thee as a man. Read that again. I will not meet thee as a man. The Bible says that when the Messiah returns, that he will not meet us as a man. That's right. Now, if you are the Christ himself, can you please explain why the Most High God misdocumented this? Don't, don't put me out here like an antichrist, man. Cause that's, man that's, that's what you're coming at, brother. No, I'm not no antichrist. Okay, so, so an you said you were Christ. Christ never, said he's not going to return as a man. That never came out of my mouth. Okay, what did you say? What did you say then? I'm sorry. You, 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 I, want, I want to make sure I don't misquote you. Because you know that's not what you, what you heard from the Okay, mouth. what did you say then? I don't care what I said. That, that's right. All right, right there now. we go. All right, that's so we're going to keep teaching then. So, now, give me Matthew 24 and 44 first. Because this is what's happening to the children of Israel. When you do not keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, you will follow any doctrine or philosophy that comes. Now, did he not just say that he was born on such and such and we must celebrate his day? That's what he said. Read that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Do what? Take heed that no man deceive you. So the Bible says to take heed. That no man deceive Because many will come saying, I am Christ. Alright? Many will come saying that. Now go to Rock 33. I want to deal with the days. I want to deal with the days. Because going into Christmas, which you black men love to celebrate. Jesus Christ is born May 18, 1957. That's false. years young today. That's false. Of course, according to what you don't know. I just read it. What, what do I not know? What do I not know? It doesn't say in the word. What do I not know? It doesn't say. Show me the scripture. The last coming is gonna be. Show me the scripture. It's only coming one more time. Oh, oh, all right. Yeah, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter thirty-three, verse seven. Why does one day excel another? So the Bible says, why does one day excel another? Why do we come out here on the Sabbath? Why is it mandatory for us to come together on the seventh day of the week? Why do we not come out on the first day of the week, which is Sunday? Let's see. Read. When is all the light of every day in the year is of is of the sun. Read. By the knowledge of the Lord. By what? By the knowledge of the Lord. So by the knowledge of the Lord, we celebrate the feast days that we have today. Right. Not what is ordained by the so-called white man which is Christmas, which is Thanksgiving. That is why what? Every public service is shut down on Thanksgiving, on Christmas. Is that ordained by God? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, give me Nehemiah 10 and 31. I'm gonna show you what day your businesses are supposed to be shut down on. What day is no business supposed to be taking place? Read it up. Read that. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 31. Uh -huh. And if the people of the land bring where or any victuals on the Sabbath day uh -huh. to sell uh -huh. that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. Or so on the Sabbath days, all business and merchandising should be shut down. That's right. According to the Bible. Right. And that is ordained by the knowledge of the Lord. 
not by what the white man ordained in 1947 or 67, whatever, whatever you want to call it. All right, go back to Sirach 33, just to show you that. Brother, you had a question? No, I, was, I was 400 years of body. I think it was 16, and you know that I'm 16, 19. All right, read that. Just put it Ecclesiastes chapter 33 verse 8 uh -huh. by the knowledge of the Lord they were distinguished and he altered seasons and feasts so by the knowledge of the Lord he made the feast days holy he made the Sabbath day he made the feast of Pentecost uh -huh. Like the Jews, that's what uh, read. Verse 9. Some of them have he made high days. Some of them have he made high days. Read. And hallowed them. And hallowed them. Read. And some of them have he made ordinary days. And some of them he have made ordinary days. That's what December the 25th is to those that are awakened to the knowledge of the truth. Right. That's what Thanksgiving is to those that awaken to the knowledge of the truth. Right. None of these days that the white man esteems high, they mean absolutely zero to those that walk in the knowledge of Christ. That's right. Let's talk about uh, the beginning, 400 years of bondage. What does that mean to you? Okay, what is the, you talking about in Genesis 15 and 13? Let me ask you this, before I go into that. Do you believe in the Bible? Of course. Okay, of course, all right. Do you understand who you are according to the Bible in reference to your nationality? Nobody. Well, and what is that? You're a Hebrew? Okay, all praise. Well, we can build then. If we, if you have that common understanding that you're an Israelite, right? Then we can build. Genesis 15 and 13. Let's go there first and let's see what does this mean to a fellow Hebrew, right? That's what you want to know. Read that. Genesis chapter 15 verse 13. Uh -huh. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed will be a stranger uh -huh. in a land that is not theirs, uh -huh. and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them uh -huh. four hundred years. Uh -huh. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward they shall come out with great substance. So this is this is twofold. This is going into our bondage in Egypt, right? And this is also going to our bondage that we are under right now here in America. Right. But a lot of people try to time it up. They say, well, in 2019, we're going to be delivered. Correct? That's what you're trying to get to, I would assume. We cannot go by that because Jesus Christ said what? That no man knoweth, no man knoweth but the Father. Right. right. So if you try to do it on that time frame, you can't do it. Because what year did the so-called Hispanic man go into captivity? No. Do you know? Are you talking about the Spanish uh, the War? The, the con there you go, the conquistadors. What year did Christopher Columbus get over here and begin to take us into captivity? 1492. 1492, right? Seven, so if that's the case, know that. if that's the case, then those 400 years have already been up. You understand that? We so we don't know, know. We don't even know that. Right. But what we do you, know. I bet you at the White House they know that. Gotcha. What we do know is once one third of the children of Israel turn away from their sins, and come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments, guess what? It's over with. That's right. And you can guarantee that. Let's read that out of the Bible. Revelation yeah. chapter 7. Let's go to Revelation chapter 7 and verse 3, because that's a great question you ask. All right? We want to understand when is the end going to come? When are we going to be delivered out of the hands of our captors and rule the world as it was ordained in the scripture? Right. Read that. Revelation chapter 7 verse 3. Uh -huh. Saying, hurt not the earth, uh -huh. neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the, till we have what? Have sealed uh -huh. the servants of our God in their foreheads. So the Bible says, he is holding back destruction on this earth. Until you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men are sealed. Now, what does it mean to be sealed? You said you're a Hebrew. What is that seal that we are waiting for the children of Israel to have? Do you know? The seal? Yes. What is the seal? As far as what? According to the Bible. Isaiah 8. Huh? Amen. I know that God can't open. Okay. What you got? The seal? The seal. What is the seal? The seal is everything that's happening right now. Okay. Let's see what the Bible says. Because one thing you're going to learn about us, we're going to read precept upon precept. Let's get, what is that seal that the 144,000 must have? Remember? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Do what? Bind up the testimony. Uh -huh. Seal the law. Do what? Seal the law. Do what? 
seal the law uh -huh. among my disciples. There you go again. Seal the law among my disciples. Right. That is why we come out here teaching what? God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. right. We are not concerned with any other thing except for teaching you how to worship the Most High God and His Son correctly. Right. Now, right now, you brothers are in error when it comes to properly learning the Bible. I'm sorry, you speak. Alright, you as well. I'm speaking to X. Huh? I'm a generation X. I'm not speaking to me. I'm speaking to you, brother. I don't receive that. I receive blessings, not curses. Ah, you receive blessings, not curses. Give me the Deuteronomy 9. I mean, not Deuteronomy. Daniel. Give me Daniel 9 and 11. The curse has come upon us. That's what I want. Because it's not a choice, brother. Let me ask you this. Was Daniel, hey, was Daniel a righteous man? I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Was Daniel a righteous man? Was Daniel righteous? Was Daniel righteous? Yes, was he righteous? You ask, you ask the question, you the I'm asking you a question. Okay, you don't know. Daniel was righteous, but guess what? He went into captivity. Right. So it's not a choice if you want to receive it or not. This is not Christianity. One thing that you're going to learn when you come into the knowledge of being an Israelite, and guess what? We are all in this thing together. Right. We went into captivity together, and we are going to leave together. That's right. It's not a choice. You got it? Yes, sir. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Uh-huh. Yea, all Israel. Yea, what? Yea, all Israel. So if all Israel have done what? Have transgressed. By all Israel have transgressed God's law. Read. Even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Uh-huh. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. No, it's just poured upon me. It's poured upon us. No, it's just poured upon you. Upon us. The curse is poured upon us. Us. That's right. As a nation of people. Right. You're trying to stuff it down their throat like a uh, like a, uh, a running back or something. Uh, if that's how you want to receive it, some will take it. Some will take it and run with it. Uh, yeah. Others won't. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. I, I can't. When I can't. I, took it, I was like, okay, I'm not running. Right. Man, I had the blue hat on. And you called me out. They right. said, no man should what? Huh? They said, no man should what? I don't know what you were referencing to. You got to enlighten. Re referencing to. No man comes through. Oh yeah, but by Christ, yeah. John 14 and 6. Let's get that. That's what you're going into? Okay, let's read that. You got it? John 14 and 6. Yes, sir. John chapter 14, verse 6. Uh-huh. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. I am what? I am the way. Uh-huh. The truth. Uh-huh. And the life. Read. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So no man will get into the kingdom of heaven. But through Jesus the Christ. Right. You understand that? That's right. Now, is Jesus going to come down out of the sky and minister to each and every one of you? Absolutely not. So is there 144,000? There you go. Great question, my brother. We just read it in Revelation 7 and 3. The hundred, you are looking at the men that are striving to be that 144. That's right. Can we say that we are going to be that? We can't say that. We must endure until the end. But what we do know is that we are going to apply God's law, statutes, and commandments until that day comes. You yeah, right. Who, who, who said it was 144,000? The Bible did. We just read it in Revelation. So are, we going, are we going King James or are we going through the Bible at 1612? We read, we read the King James. All right. So, we always have these deep brothers out here. So let's get back. Oh, Lamentations 2. That's what I want. Now, because we ask, we ask the question, how and when are we going to be delivered out of this captivity? The Bible gives you the solution. Lamentations 2, verse 14. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 14. Uh -huh. Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things. So the Bible says that your prophets, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, they have seen vain and foolish things. That is why you go to the church today, what will you see? The Christmas tree? What will you see at Thanksgiving weekend? They handed out free turkeys? The white man today was handing out free food and everybody instantly can understand and walk correctly. But when the prophets come out here and teach you the Bible, we get no love or respect at all. Right. Why is that? Read. And they have not discovered thine iniquity. And they have what? They have not discovered thine iniquity. Those pastors and preachers have not discovered your iniquity. Your iniquity is sin, right. according to Psalms 38, 18. That's what iniquity is. So it says that those pastors have not discovered your sin. Read. To turn away. To do what? To turn away what? thy captivity. So the Bible's letting you know. Once we reveal your sins and you turn away from 
woman that your captivity will come to an end. That's right. It's that simple. That's why we're not wasting time with all this nonsense. We are about God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.